All right, guys, so the subject of today's video is how to optimize your bench. And one of the biggest mistakes that I often see is right away we look to the best benchers. We look to the best lifters and try to replicate what they do. But a lot of times you're going to get more value, you're going to gain more insight out of looking at someone who's not built for bench and how have they gotten better. So the guy with the long arms, you know, they're often going to have a better idea of how to get really good at bench given that they've struggled with it it's not something that came natural like for me deadlift always came natural bench did not but you look at a guy like Kaylor Woolham who has super long arms built for deadlift he went on to bench 491 pounds at one point um, I think almost 500 pounds in competition and myself I benched 485 and it was never something that came naturally to me even being off PEDs I hit 390 back in January and now I'm at about 320 at 200 pounds body weight so the thing that I think has really helped me the most over the years, I've been coaching guys for 10 years, I've, we've tried everything with different guys, with myself, I've seen it all. Now for me, the biggest number one game changer that you could implement to optimize your bench and get it as strong as possible is simply to have faster descents on the way down on bench. You're never gonna see a really strong bencher unless they're in gear or unless they're doing something along those lines who is not explosive, okay? In, in geared lifting, you can bring the bar down really slowly. That's what you have to do to control it, but it's never gonna work great in, in raw lifting. If you wanna be as strong as possible on bench, bring the bar down a little faster and you're gonna be far more explosive on the way up. So I think it's Newton's third law where it's for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So if you're bringing the bar down slowly, you're gonna press up slowly. And that's why I say you want to be explosive, bring it down controlled, but bring it down in a fast manner. And there's always that balance between being too quick on the way down and out of control and having enough speed to where you can fire the bar off your chest. So you still have to be in control, but at the same time, a faster descent will lead to more power, more explosiveness off the chest. And that is one of the things that has helped me more than anything when it comes to bench, even more than the queuing of like trying to really build up my arch, trying to tighten up, all that sort of stuff. And honestly, a lot of that can actually backfire. If you're focusing so hard on staying tight on bench, you're gonna lose all your speed. It's the same way on a deadlift. Anytime I've tried to really place a super high emphasis on getting as tight as possible, I always sacrifice some degree of speed and explosive, explosiveness on the deadlift. So with any of these lifts, you wanna think explosiveness, but you wanna still be controlled. So there's a happy medium to it all. And on all of your warm-ups, you're going to want to lift them as explosively as possible. So guys, if I'm starting with the bar on bench or 135 or whatever, I'm trying to fire that bar through the ceiling. I'm trying to move it as fast as I can because I know that force production will translate to my max weights. So as I keep warming up, getting heavier and heavier, when I get to that work, working set, that top set, or get to the max attempt, I'm gonna be faster, I'm gonna be more explosive because I've been drilling that on all of my warm-ups. I've been activating the muscle with my CNS, my central nervous system. I'm getting better motor neuron recruitment, better muscle activation by trying to be explosive. And it's the same principle that Louis Simmons made famous with the dynamic effort method or the conjugate method, which actually he ad adopted from the Russians, but he brought it to the US. The dynamic effort method was all about moving the weights as fast as possible. But my old thing is let's just streamline the process, cut out that day, and simply try to be explosive on all of our warm-ups on the main lifts and all of our, our working sets. Then that's really what I've tried to do. So on all of my all my warm-ups, all my working sets on these main lifts, squat, bench, and deadlift, I'm trying to be explosive. That's the main key. Now, if you guys are getting value out of this content, please subscribe and give the video a thumbs up. That really helps. But I think a lot of people overthink it where they're like, I need to get as tight as possible. I need to master all these cues. I need to be thinking about all these things. And it's actually at the deter it's, it's actually at the detriment of your lift. So guys, I've tried the soft pause before. I've tried staying super tight on the way down. And I'd say for the majority of lifters, you're gonna be better off bringing the bar down faster and having more of that sink pause. And the sink pause just allows you to be a lot more explosive off the chest. So I still have guys who do well with the softer pause, I have a guy right now who's he's very good at the soft pause and it works for him and he seems to, to fare better with it. So this isn't a cut and dry case where it's this way for everybody. But I would say for the vast majority of guys, 
having that faster descent and firing off the chest harder is going to be the way to go. You're just going to be more explosive. So that's something I want to throw out there, but there's always exceptions to the rule. And lifting fast is never going to be a bad idea on the main lifts. Uh, you know, you don't want to be going out of control on machine work or bodybuilding work as far as accessories, but on the main lifts, trying to be explosive, trying to be fast is generally going to pay off. So something I like to do with my own training now is having that explosive speed, power, focus on the main lifts, and then I hit a lot of bodybuilding work afterward in the form of lateral raises, curls, uh, overhead press, dips, things like that. And those are a little more controlled tempo, really focusing on the contraction of the muscle on like curls, so to speak, on lateral raises, really trying to focus on isolating the this medial delts. That's all the stuff I think about afterward. But on the main lifts themselves, I'm really trying to be as explosive as possible. And that's one thing that's paid off. Now, another thing, when you guys are unracking the bar, I see a lot of guys start back here and they unrack way out here. That's too much strain on the rotator cuffs. It's gonna it's gonna lead to injuries over time. You want to get to where you're unracking the bar like this. Just that little bit of movement. Just a little that's it. You don't want to be way out here and having to bring the bar way forward because that's just gonna blow up your shoulder. So I know that's hard to do for a lot of you guys who train at commercial gyms on those life fitness benches that are terrible, that are like super narrow, super low to the ground. You can't arch, you can't you can't get leg drive, you slide on them. You have to unrack, do a half press to get the bar to the rack. Like I know a lot of you guys, you guys train at golds and stuff and have to do that, and I understand. But you can still apply the principle of the faster descent and being explosive and firing off your chest. You should be like a piston. The bar should come down, pop it up. And in the videos I show, I'm not quite as controlled as I should be, but I'm still better off than if I was bringing the bar down slow. You bring the bar down slow like this, there's no speed. There's no acceleration from that. You bring the bar down real slow and tentative, you're not going to have power. Bring the bar down, psh, pop it up. That's what I want you guys to think about. Get the unrack position dialed in. Just a little unrack position, just a little lift off to where you're not having to get a huge lift out. And that's going to help you as well. And then you won't need you won't need anybody to hand it off to you because you're not placing that immense strain on the shoulder. And there's been times where I've developed my arch, I've tried to arch a lot more. And it's actually backfired because I lose a lot of that, that explosiveness. So for a lot of you guys, you're probably going to benefit from having your feet flat and out in front of you with your heels on the ground. You're going to get more power from that with even a more minimized arch, and you're going to be more explosive. So arching is not the end-all be-all because you'll notice a lot of the guys with the biggest arches, a lot of the men and women in powerlifting with the biggest arches, do not have that explosiveness. So there's a trade-off to dialing in things to where you're limiting your range of motion. You see all these people with a limited range of motion press, but they have no speed. And that doesn't, I've tried it, it doesn't work for me. It doesn't work for a lot of guys. So just because you see something doesn't mean it's going to work for you. You have to give it some trial and error and figure it out along the way. But I thought this lesson could be useful to you guys. You know, I'm going to keep throwing all the things I've learned out over the years coaching people for the last 10, 11 years now, almost 11, and all the things I learned with myself from when I was benching 485 as an enhanced lifter at 242 pounds to now being a natural lifter 200 pounds and being off drugs for three years. I've, I've learned so many things. I've worked with hundreds of guys over the years, and it's just these things I want to help you out with and pass the value along to you. So if you get value out of the channel, please subscribe, give it a thumbs up, and uh, support my sponsor, Barbell Apparel. These guys are good to me. We came out with our own t-shirt. I got my Bighorn tee, which I'll link in the description. Love it. A lot of thought went into that. That helps support me as well. But I appreciate you guys. I got the race on uh, Saturday. And then we're just going to keep rolling, keep lifting heavy, and pushing things to the next level. So thank you guys. I really appreciate it. I'm out. All right, guys. Be sure to check out the early Barbell Apparel Black Friday sale. $50 off all jeans. $50 off the Athletic Fit 2.0 jeans. $50 off the regular jeans. I'm going to link that in the description. Check it out. Appreciate you guys supporting my sponsor. These guys are awesome. Love the shirts. They fit good. They show off the muscles. Give them a shot.